Marcus Fulvius Flaccus, Consul 264 BCE. The origins and early career of Marcus Fulvius Flaccus are not well attested. The first known member of the Fulvius Gens to reach the consulship had been Lucius Fulvius Curvus in 322, when he had served alongside of Fabius Rullianus during the first of his many consulships. Friedrich Munzer, in his 1920 study of the origins of each Roman aristocratic family, posited that the Fulvii were originally an Etruscan family and that Lucius Fulvius Curvus may have been the first in his family to even be a Roman, much less a senator or consul. For Marcus Fulvius Flaccus, who was most likely his grandson, this meant that his family's name didn't carry the same kind of weight as Rome's better known and frankly more Roman families. Nonetheless, the Fulvii clearly had significant power and influence, and Marcus Fulvius Flaccus was able to win election as the plebeian consul in 264, alongside of the patrician Appius Claudius Caudex. Our literary sources show confusion and disagreement when it comes to the fall of Volsinii, with the victory being variously attributed to Decius Mus, Fabius Gerges, and an unnamed consul. However, the Acta Triumphalia records that Fulvius was awarded a triumph for the fall of Volsinii in 264. While he didn't make a strong enough impression on Rome's historians to be named, they tended to show a degree of favoritism to men from the more famous houses, Fulvius still managed to live the dream of every Roman senator by serving as consul and being awarded a triumph. Following the death of Quintus Fabius Maximus Gerges, the command of the Roman force fighting against the revolting Etruscans at the city of Volsinii fell to Marcus Fulvius Flaccus, the plebeian consul. This would have been by lot. By 264, Rome had completed her conquest of Italy, but some of her more recent subjects were still a bit restive. Volsinii was the last independent Etruscan city and had no potential allies anywhere in Italy. At the time, Rome had not yet begun its war with Carthage, so the citizens of Volsinii could not even hope for a far-fetched Punic expedition to come to their rescue. For Fulvius, his selection by lot for this historically significant but low-risk campaign must have seemed like nothing short of a confirmation of the love that the gods had for him. The details of this campaign are non-existent, but the siege of Volsinii must have dragged on for some months. Polybius records that Fulvius Flaccus was still campaigning when the Mamertines from Messana asked Rome for aid in their losing struggle against Hero of Syracuse. Fulvius's consular colleague Claudius was sent to Sicily, and Fulvius was never sent to reinforce him, even though both consuls were deployed to Sicily the following year as the First Punic War began in earnest. For Fulvius, back in Italy, his campaign probably wrapped up by the end of summer or beginning of autumn. Fulvius plundered the fallen city, ordered the site razed, and relocated its survivors to another city, which was also named Volsinii during antiquity. Today, the city of Balsena is the modern descendant of the second Volsinii, while the site of the first is not known for certain, but may have been Orvito, or Vito, which is just nine or so miles away from Volsena. Since a triumph required that a Roman leader kill 5,000 or more foreign combatants, the siege must have come to a bloody end, or else must have been a, there must have been a large field battle prior to the siege's conclusion that our sources have failed to record. He came away with a large hall of statuary, which he donated to temples all around Rome upon his return. In November 264, Fulvius celebrated the triumph. Curiously, given Marcus Fulvius Flaccus' track record of success as a general, he was never again called upon to lead Roman armies, even though we have every reason to assume he was still available for most of the period of the First Punic War. And if you hear any ruffling or bumping in the background, that is my cat, who gets very active late at night. <laughs>